Water has a direct effect on our brains. There is a legend among the Persian Sufis. Once upon a time, a wise man said that the day would come when all the water in the world, except for what had been specially collected, would disappear. And then different water would replace it. But anyone who drank the new water would lose his mind. Only one man took the prophecy seriously and began to store up water. But the day that had been predicted did come, and every body of water emptied out. The man who had listened to the wise man drank water from his supply. And then, the bodies of water and wells filled up with water again. People thirstily drank this water, and every one of them went crazy. But the man who had listened to the wise man continued to drink water only from his own supply and kept his sanity. And he was the only sane person left among the madmen, and therefore he was called crazy. And then he poured his reserves of real water, the old water, onto the ground, and he drank the new water and lost his mind. And the madmen decided that he had become sane. major part of our, our brain of our brains of water so the water and the easy movement of the water molecules and so on will leave part of that imprint so yes to some extent the water is implicated in the patterning of the information in the brain now when you look at organs say the heart or the lung or muscles, or the brain, then all that you can see in a simple NMR experiment is the water in these organs. The water, your head is full of water. There is nothing else but water, almost. Let's imagine that here we have a human being. And here, we have water. This water contains many different types of information. If we introduce this water into the human body, then that human body will assimilate this information, which may change the person's characteristics. That may change. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells and they've lost their electrical charge so they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease and uh, arthritis and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structured water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, and they have their electrical charge, so they repel each other. That allows them to carry oxygen, and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment. I think that's utterly amazing. That, that a water could, that just drinking water could do that. Traditional Eastern medicine has been based for many centuries on the vibrations and resonance of the body's water content. The pulse indicates if the resonance tone is right. It is believed that the pulse may be strong, weak, cold, or hot. On the basis of this, an experienced physician carries out a kind of energy scan of the body makes a diagnosis and prescribes treatment. We do not heal with water because a person, the human body, is water. 
the person simply reads the mantras or prayers in order to correct the bad water he has inside. How this hidden effect works is not known. In all of the world's religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, it is the practice to recite a prayer before taking food or to consecrate the food during major religious holidays. How often do we stop and think, what for? And how did the certainty arise in such dissimilar religions that this is the right thing to do? Why did something that science is only now trying to understand seem obvious to our ancestors? It turns out that the frequency of vibrations in the prayers of any religion uttered in any language is 8 hertz, which corresponds to the frequency of the oscillations of the Earth's magnetic field. Therefore, a prayer, pronounced with love, creates a harmonic structure in water, which is an ingredient of absolutely all food. We now have some idea about how this happens through the structurization of water clusters, water molecules. Therefore, we can take some purely practical advice from this. To sit down at the table in a very good mood and under no circumstances to dine with cruel or aggressive-minded people because this will have a direct destructive effect on our health. In 1995, Dr. Masato Imoto was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Imoto's laboratory, they presented water with different types of music, after which they froze the water and then under the microscope could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. Heavy rock. Sometimes it's just certain eruptions, emotional ones, which cause such absolutely negative results. I can't recall a case in which such a negative spewing out of emotions as this happened at a classical music concert. Experiments show that aggression causes a sharp change in water's memory. Such water can provoke an aggressive state in hitherto calm people. Strange as it might seem, evil interacts more easily and simply. Apparently, this has to do with the sensitivities of human beings who always feel negative things more acutely. Dr. Emoto conducted another groundbreaking experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month he said thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto feels that this experiment provides an important lesson especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. 
Indifference does the greatest harm. It may not always be easy to do, and almost always it takes practice. Practical experience show that hatred, rage, and even annoyance not only exert a destructive influence on other people, but they also give feedback. This begins geistig in Gedanken, when man negative Gedanken aussendet. Intellectually, at the level of thoughts, a person who sends negative thoughts is polluting his own water, of which his body is 75 to 90 percent composed, and giving it a negative charge. Many laboratories around the world have repeatedly carried out an experiment that produces similar results. Water from a single container was divided into two portions. One part was subjected to an outside influence that changed the structure and properties of that water. The water in the second flask acquired the same structure and the same properties after a certain period of time. Even if the two portions of water were a significant distance removed from each other. The water has a very important uh, photographic memory, we can say that, and also you can imprint it with very subtle energies, even from 10,000 kilometers. Does that mean that remote communication occurs between human beings, who are essentially structures composed of water? In February 2005, Professor Vecheslav Zvonikov and a group of colleagues conducted an experiment to confirm or disconfirm the hypothesis that remote communication between people is possible. Two people are 10,000 miles apart. One is in Moscow, the other in South America near the city of Santa Elena. Here we have the virtual brain of the experiment's participants. During the 15 minutes before the experiment begins, there are no visible correlations. The least change in posture, pulse, or respiratory frequency is recorded. EKGs and EEGs are taken. Suddenly, the instruments register distinct changes. The two people separated by this enormous distance have somehow tuned themselves to the same wave. The instruments show synchronization of certain areas of their brains, of breathing patterns, and pulses. How can this be explained? We don't yet have any answers to that question. So far, this is a scientific mystery. There is a hypothesis that the body's liquids play a part in this. Most likely, and we do have a good deal of data to confirm this, liquids within the body also carry out a sort of information transmission function. So therefore, our actions every day is very important. And our actions are related to nature, to the whole cosmos. So what one does doesn't just affect themselves. It affects other people and it affects the whole universe. We studied water during solar eclipses and when comet Schumacher-Levy was passing in those periods of time. And it turned out that a tissue culture in water, when a solar eclipse is in the offing a week ahead of time before the eclipse, when everything is still far ahead, it already begins to fade. The water showed a direct connection to the event. The system of the universe exists as a single perfect organism. All of its parts, including us and our Earth, are inseparably bound together by huge streams of information. And on our planet, water plays the key role in how the information is exchanged. In effect, it is the medium through which all nature is governed. 